everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Nick Howell. Thank you for joining me for this video because the one that I had scheduled to put up got pushed out. This was too big not to cover, so I had to jump in and show you guys some of the breaking news coming out this week. We've got a big, big blog post that came out last week from Jeff Barr, VP over at AWS, talking about single AZ deployment types in FSx ONTAP. And we've also got the integration and, and release of FSx ONTAP integration into the native launch wizard of EC2. Man, we've got to take a look at these, so let's go. The only way to start this off right is to give some kudos to Jeff Barr over at AWS for this amazing blog post that he wrote up. I'm going to leave it down in the description for you guys. Go Definitely go check it out or listen to it. They do have Polly over there as well, so if you prefer to listen to it. But he is. this is the announcement post for the release of something we've been anticipating for quite some time. One of several things that we've been looking forward to, and that is single AZ deployments for FSx ONTAP. Now, I want to go over this in a little bit more detail because there is a ton of nuance and architectural type of conversations that we need to have when it comes to multi-AZ versus single AZ. And if you're an on-prem administrator, the way that you need to think about and approach this. So you're an on-prem administrator, right? If you are. And the way that you design and architect systems normally are you'll have either two nodes or a multi-node system in a single location, right? So that is akin to what the single AZ is. It's still a multi-node deployment. Uh, it's just not spanned across availability zones in AWS, which in, in NetApp terms would be more akin to something along the lines of Metro Cluster, if you think about it. You're spanning two, the same systems across two different sites for super high availability, all of that kind of stuff. But with, when you enter the cloud, you have this new construct called an availability zone. And the way that that works is it's in each region you have usually like four different availability zones that you can choose from or that will be auto-selected for you. Uh, when you do a single AZ deployment, it's, put, it's putting it all into a single AZ. So in the event that there is an outage of an availability zone, you will lose access to that file system. Conversely, doing the multi-AZ deployment will allow you to maintain uptime even in the event of an a, uh, availability zone going down. Just some things you need to weigh up. The single AZ is coming to market at nearly 50% the cost, uh, uh, running cost of a multi-AZ deployment. So again, these are architectural conversations and decisions that you need to have. That said, the ability to deploy a full FSx multi-node instance and deployment into a single availability zone at half the cost. This is something I'm very excited about because I think it's going to unlock a lot of the things that have held people back, like unstructured data, uh, home drives, departmental shares, things that are massive capacities but don't necessarily need the availability of a multi-AZ deployment or the cost that's associated with a multi-AZ deployment. This is all fantastic news for things like tier two, unstructured, backups, disaster recovery, uh, unit testing and dev test staging areas, all of that kind of stuff. This is a massive deal and I don't want to understate that. I hope I'm not. I, I, I normally don't understate things. But it, it's, a, it's an option for you to choose from between multi-AZ and single AZ now. Just understand that it's effectively the same FSX deployment. It's still multiple nodes. It's just whether or not it's spanning across multiple AZs within whatever region you're deploying that file system into, right? Hope that makes sense. Please leave me comments down below if I didn't cover that correctly, right? Let's go take a look at it and see what it looks like. There's not that much that's changed, honestly. You're just, you have one more selection. If you watched my previous video, if you haven't, go watch it yet. But if you watched my previous video, we went over the quick create and standard create available in FSx ONTAP right here at the top, right? And so we'll put a, we don't even have to put a name in. We can see it right here, multi-AZ and single AZ. And if you click the little info flag, you'll get a blurb over on the right of what the differences are and things like that. But just remember, multi-AZ, single AZ, nearly the exact same deployment. It's just going across multiple availability zones in the multi-AZ 
as, as opposed to a single availability zone in the single AZ. So the only consideration you really need to keep in mind is whether or not you can your availability can suffer the outage of an availability zone in the event that it one does go down. And, and let's be honest, they do go down from time to time. It's not as uncommon as people think it is. Wh whatever cloud provider you might be using, it's going to happen. It's not if, it's when. The question is, is whether or not you need to be overly prepared for that and what type of workload you're hosting with that file system uh, or backing with that file system and can it suffer an outage that's the decision point for you of whether you should go multi AZ or single AZ in the event you don't know always lean on multi AZ because it's the safest way to do it it's the best way to do it as far as making sure that there's uptime making sure you don't suffer any outages things like that however if you are getting really into your architecture and you really want to understand where you're spending your money, Single AZ is a very cost-effective solution to get basically the exact same service from FSX at a lower price point uh, to be able to deliver files and storage. Just be aware of that contingency of cross-availability zones. Shout out again to Jeff for that great blog post. Thank you for sharing that announcement last week with us. The next thing we're going to talk about is one that I've personally been on a mission <laughs> to, to champion over the last couple of years as NetApp has entered into the cloud space more. We've brought on these managed storage services uh, into all of the cloud providers. This one is one of the big ones. So tying FSX natively into other uh, other apps and other workflows that are that are native to AWS, such as one of the arguably the most popular one ec2 virtual machines instances right everybody at this point that's done any work in the cloud has deployed an ec2 instance i believe but what if i told you that in the launch wizard itself and the api you can just come down here to the bottom when you're doing your configuration right it's not apparent at the beginning but if you click advanced and you click uh file so you have your choices right you can deploy an ebs volume block storage or you can deploy a file system if you click deploy file systems right there, nothing's showing up because I don't have it deployed into the same VPC and subnet. That's the one thing you got to take care of. So let's throw a uh, uh, four CPU, 16 gigs, sure. But it, I, it, it's very important that you choose the right VPC and subnet. You have to do that first because otherwise they won't line up. So let's choose my core VPC and I'm going to choose number two. Right, and then we're going to come back down to storage on advanced. Uh, we're going to click edit, and you'll see now that it lines up EFS or FSX. So, in addition to EBS volumes, which is the traditional default, you can now add EFS and yes, FSX natively in the EC2 launch wizard. If you click add shared systems, you it auto discovers all of your FSX instances. Hey, there's the one I did from Cloud Field Day a, a month or so ago. So you can choose which SVM and any associated volumes that you want to mount and store the data in this EC2 instance uh, directly and natively within uh, e the EC2 launch wizard. Fan freaking tastic. This is the kind of native integration stuff that we've really been excited about here at NetApp. And I, I think that this is just the first of many, but I'm so excited that it's EC2 because that is arguably one of the biggest ones at AWS. So there you go, guys. Quick overview of the new EC2 Launch Wizard edition of FSX on tap, and of course, single AZ deployments of FSX at half the cost. Man, things are getting really spicy now with FSX on tap in AWS. If you haven't been paying attention, go check out some of the other videos here on the channel. Make sure you subscribe, turn those notifications on, because I put out new videos every week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.